Welcome. <clears throat> Welcome to my dungeon. Welcome to Cauldron Script. I'm your host, Master Cauldron. If you're new to the show, I use my 25 years of BDSM experience and 20 years working in the psychology field to dispel myths, get rid of stereotypes, and answer your questions about BDSM. You can call in at 865-268-4005 to leave your questions or visit the crypt at cauldronscrypt.com. In this episode of the crypt, Mayfair and I are talking about the often forgotten about Dom's rights to deny consent. Um, Mayfair, yes, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Let's see. Oh, I am all right. Trying to figure out why I'm not showing and why you're not showing on the screen today. It was quite the rush to get. Oh, that's a lot of noise there, Mayfair. Sorry, sir. Well, we had 18 people. We had 18 people coming in, and uh, there we go. All right, now we're there. We had 18 people when we started, and now it's dropped down to 10. There's 11. Looks like some people may be checking back in with us. So, uh, yeah, it was a it was a rough, rough day. I rented a car. A lot of you know that uh, Sword Out the Kinks was down here visiting for uh, our very own Junicorns Angel's birthday party last weekend. Uh, she was on her way back. Her car had some issues. It was just a whole ordeal. And uh, we ended up having to rent her a car. And then we get over to Knoxville, uh, 35 minutes from home to a rental place where I'd reserved a car and they rented it to somebody else. Uh, yeah, so I had to run around and find another rental course at Sunday. So they all are either closed, close at 12 or close at 2. Luckily, the airport had one. Um Anyway, enough moaning and groaning about why I'm late getting here. Thank everyone for coming. Um, on this topic, if you have any questions, comments, feel free to drop them in. However, if you do have questions and comments, uh, I may miss them. Mayfair may miss them. We're going to be talking about this. So uh, save. try to save your questions for the end. If you're listening to this in the audio version uh, of the podcast, we do this live Sundays at 3 p.m. Eastern time. So uh, stop by for that. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Don't forget to like the video. All that good fun stuff. Smash the buttons and blah, 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 bitty, blah that everybody else says. Um, but it actually really does. Even if you give it a thumbs down. If you don't like it, thumbs down it. I don't care. You're interacting with it. So let me know what you think. Uh, enough waffling on. Sorry. As they say, yeah. Um, a few weeks ago, uh, we had spoken with a uh, a lady about uh, the red flags and things. She's actually popped back up into the chat before we jump jump into today's topic. Um, she said she wanted to thank Master Cauldron and everyone who helped me out about a month ago with my dom. Everything is good, and he apologized for his behavior in regards to me listening to this show. Oh. So, Nice. But, throw that up here. Yeah, I definitely remember that, Janice. Uh, thank you so much for the update, and I'm glad things worked out. Uh, that that makes me feel a lot better. I was just it was strangely enough, I was thinking about you uh, Thursday. Something come up, so that is awesome news. All right, uh, spank them. Ugh, so rude. I'm missing some stuff here, but oh well. All right, Mayfair, thank you again for joining me today. Let me hit these rules to love by, and then we've got an article. And I'm I'm freaking excited about this one uh, because this is something that I get emails about uh, all the time. And you'll notice that most of the time when I when I find an article, it's either on something that I can't really find anywhere else, something that explains it better than I could, or it's um, it, it, the same thing as messages that I receive all the time. But I don't have consent to share those with people. So in this case, it's on a public forum, and it can be shared. So uh, rules to love by. Rule number one, safe, sane, consensual, and informed. Rule number two, kinky. That's K-N-K-I and, and comes from the Kinky app. May be available on all platforms. I don't know anymore. Not a sponsor, but it stands for knowledge, no intolerance, kindness, and integrity. 
And rule number three, the quote from Mr. Paul Young, submission is not about authority and it's not about obedience. It is all about relationships of love and respect. All right, this article, sex with my girlfriend is taking an alarming turn in quarantine. Not all of us are cut out to be murderous KGB agents. <laughs> this is written by Stoya uh, on August 11th of 2020. This comes from Slate.com. Link is, of course, in the description and in the show notes to the audio only version of the podcast. Uh, this is not going to be a long story time with Cauldron. There's going to be a lot of interaction uh, between myself and Mayfair in the chat room. So get warmed up because uh, you're going to have a lot to say on this one. And there's a lot of really good jokes that could be made too, even though it's a very serious topic. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right. So uh, the the forum it's a it's a ride in on uh, how to do it, and it's mostly a, a sex topic forum. And if you go to this link, if you scroll down past this article, there's tons of articles. Most of them are pretty interesting. If you if you're into the insight uh, of others' lives, if you want to voyeur through someone's writing, so dear, how to do it. Since the pandemic, my girlfriend has been living with me, so we are spending much more time together and having much more sex. While sharing everyday activities is bringing us closer together in some respects, changes in our sexual relationship are driving us apart. We had what I thought was a fun and varied sex life. Dun, dun, dun. We role play, act out fantasies, play with toys, and suggest new things to each other. Lately, she has been wanting more and more bondage, something that I always enjoyed and initiated as fantasy. But I'm becoming unco I'm becoming uncomfortable within reality. Previously, the most I would ever do was hold her down while penetrating her and yell threats of more to come, but she has been shopping online like mad for handcuffs, straps, and e-stem toys, and wanting scenarios beyond my ravishing her to my hurting her. In the past, when we used clamps, I would put them on her, but she would control the tension. Now she wants me to control the tension, but she won't tell me when she's had enough. Yesterday, she started crying, so I immediately stopped the tension. I took the clamps off her nipples and asked, <clears throat> excuse me, and asked if she was okay. But rather than being grateful for my concern, she berated me for going off script. She was a spy, and I was torturing her for information. She said it was like breaking the third wall in a play, and I spoiled the game. I told her I am no longer comfortable with this, but she dismissed my concerns because she is giving consent. Doesn't consent have to be mutual? Just because she's willing to receive pain doesn't mean I'm willing to administer it. I don't mind playing a KGB agent, but I don't want to be one in real life. I love her and I want to satisfy her, but this is just too much. What can I do? Signed, Putin. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, you've read this, haven't you? Yes, sir. All right. So, uh, bef yeah, you just read this this morning or this afternoon. So, what uh, what were your thoughts initially when you read this before we get into the columnist's uh, reply? Uh, that's, that's not cool. <laughs> like, I mean, she shouldn't, she should respect how he feels. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, and that's the thing though, is usually, I hear this a lot. Um, there is one of the cryptors who I don't have permission to call by name, 
uh, publicly, uh, but I know when her and her husband got started, it was kind of the same way. Like he was really timid and uncomfortable about pushing his own boundaries uh, in administering her pain. And no matter how much she told him, he didn't get it uh, until she put it into terms. And and that's what I, I ended up having to tell her was, look, you're looking at this from your perspective as everybody does, and that's okay because that's what people do. But we need to strive to understand before being understood. So you need to think, okay, how can you relate this to him? Um, what would make it understandable in his mind? And that was the point where everything changed. Um, oh, thanks, Art Kitten. She says, I like hearing the perspective of a dom or top. Uh, Hadia, Hadia, sorry, Hadia says, anyone can stop a scene, top or bottom, especially if they're uncomfortable or Need to check in. Absolutely. Uh, Stoya is an amazing individual. Yes, <laughs> absolutely, says Shadowy Fox. Um, all right. Well, let's let's jump back into this and hear the response. But Mayfair, I agree with you 100% on that was just my thought was like, yeah, that's not cool. And then I was in a hurry to read the reply. I'm like, oh, let's. Let's see where this goes. Right. So, uh, all right. Dear Putin, you are absolutely correct that consent needs to come from all involved parties and that consent needs to be specific. A broad consent to BDSM in no way means that you've consented to the full range of BDSM activities. Hmm. And my, what a range there is. Yeah. <laughs> I can absolutely understand how a person might get so wrapped up in the scene that they become agitated when there's a pause or an interruption. Uh, the, the first thought that popped into my head was people screaming at us that the dungeon was closing. Mm. Down at 1763. Uh, and come to find out it was not the the dungeon staff. It was the event staff uh, who do not work or volunteer at the dungeon other than for those events. So uh, the owner, remember, he come in and he, he waited like five minutes before I looked up and got my, uh, he got my attention then and told me 15 minutes. And uh, he did it right, but he was the only one. I didn't know about so, that one. I, oh, I was yeah. unaware of him. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I knew about the story, but yeah. it didn't well, you, catch my attention. And, and you were facing the wrong direction, but ever, <laughs> how'd you like them flipping the lights on and off while they yelled to us? It was a really weird place to come out of. Yeah. Because we'd gotten kind of intense, so it, it it messed with me. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was uh, not comfortable for either one of us. Um, anyway, so... Back to the article, obviously we can understand how someone would become agitated when there's a pause or an interruption in a scene. Uh, that's life, though. That's part of playing sanely and consensually. It wasn't okay for your girlfriend to berate you for breaking character. You did the right thing. If crying hasn't been discussed or it's been discussed as something you're uncomfortable playing through, you should absolutely stop to check in or honor your own boundary. There is an idea in BDSM that submissives are, <laughs> excuse me, that the submissive is always in control. It sounds nice and it's great to help lay the fears of the outsiders to rest. The submissive is the one asking for this. They can stop at any time. They dictate what they do and don't want to do, etc. But in reality, I worry that we have and or that we can sometimes lose sight of the top's consent and agency. All fantasy scenarios aside, 
The dominant usually wants to please their partner. They may be motivated to go further than they're really comfortable without a desire to fulfill their partner's needs. Let me do that again. Excuse me. They may, this is the dominance, they may be motivated to go further than they're really comfortable without a desire to fulfill their partner's needs. Um, yeah. We need to be cautious of the comfort and consent of everyone involved in a scene. Have the two of you ever done a yes, no, maybe list? There are plenty online, or you can make your own. The idea of the list is an exhaustive... <laughs> the idea of the list is an exhaustive catalog of sexual activities people might do together that each party can independently mark their level of interest in. You might suggest the two of you engage in this exercise as a way of getting back to the same page. Once you've both marked your lists, you go through them together, comparing to see what, uh, where you overlap and discuss in more granular detail the maybes and the no's. Remember, you get to have no's too. And I wouldn't engage in this kind of play again until your girlfriend strongly affirms that. Okay. And that's, that's the end of the article. To touch on something from the crypt, there is a link there in the description, uh, coldernscrypt.com slash survey, where you can go to uh, fill out one of these lists. Uh, BDSMcontracts.org, also in their contract books, it's got pages and pages of this. It's been a while since I printed out one of my lists. I think it's about five or six pages long. Don't hit the back button. If you do, it'll mess it up. You'll have to start all over, and it'll send me a nasty email. Uh, it takes about 30 minutes or so to complete some of the things you aren't going to know. If you don't know them, click on NA and move on to the next one, and then come back to it and research it later. I promise you're going to want to research it later. Uh, things like Gates of Hell, you're just going to be curious about. A lot of people who are new don't know what Bastinado is. Um there's there's a lot of things on there, but that will give you a really good uh, way to go through it. And a lot of people will go through, will redo that every six months to a year to kind of see where they're at because things change. So, all right, Mayfair. Yes, sir. God, you got a lot of noise going on back there. <laughs> uh, what are your thoughts? I think it was answered very well. Um... There, there's. It's definitely something that she needs to understand and respect. Um, and if he's just not comfortable with that, then she's gonna have to. I mean, she has to respect that. Mm -hmm. And he shouldn't be made to feel guilty. Um, I think a comment over here, uh, at three thirty by Projection TV. Uh, in that, that aspect. Nice. A dom should be properly trained to perform duties. And if you're talking about like a, a fear torture scene, I mean that's a that's a big thing. If that's what she's wanting, that can that can lead to super huge landmines. Oh yeah. Um, so he definitely need, would need to be more prepared for not only the during this scene but the aftercare in the weeks after because that can be that can damage you mentally. Mm -hmm. That kind of a play, I imagine anyway. Yeah, we got a, a pretty bad echo too. You may want to turn your volume down just a little bit. Echo stop. <laughs> I said that in my <laughs> my Amazon device fired up. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's uh, it's funny. I I was just looking at that comment uh, when you brought that up. Uh, Lilac Wine says all things are possible in BDSM as long as there are clearly defined and specific limits and rules negotiated. If you hit a bump or someone crosses the line, that is a trigger for a serious check-in. Absolutely. Um, God, there's been so many good comments. I'm sorry I can't can't put them all up on the screen at one time. I'd love to. Uh, 
This situation can often be clear indicator that your kinks do not align. Many ignore this clear red flag out of fear of ending their relationship. Well, I and I would I, I wouldn't be ready to argue that just yet. It can be an indicator, but I certainly wouldn't be ready to argue that yet because he may find out that he's into it. He just needs to be eased into it because he's he's not being shown any care, concern, or respect for his position. And and like the the uh producer that I was talking about earlier, uh, you know, things that he was like, no, I will I will never do this. I will never be okay with this. Eventually he was okay with that. And it led into a beautifully amazing uh dynamic that uh, if you're a producer, you get to witness this because we get to talk to them all the time. Go ahead. I mean, even if their kinks don't line up, that doesn't necessarily mean that the relationship is doomed. Um, there are many couples who non-sexually kink with other people. Yeah. Um, and if it's it's about the torture and the psychological uh, stuff, they could very easily maybe go to their local community and find a play partner for her to go to that far further extreme. It doesn't mean it has to be over. It just means they may have to realign where and who and what. <laughs> yeah. That's a, that's a very, very good point. Which brings into play partners, service tops, you know, if there's a concern of jealousy or something like that about it, you know, there's there's that service topic. Now, that does require because her fantasies that she wants to play out are obviously uh, sexual in nature. So that brings in a whole nother aspect of things. Or maybe somebody else can do the, the torture scene. And then, you know, that, that's where that ends. And then he comes in to pick up with the, the kinky sexual part. I think there's ways had- to do it some play partners or uh, yeah, play partners uh, that you beat them and their aftercare was they have sex with their partner. Um, yes. I think that's happened at our local dungeon a few times. Yeah. Yeah. That has been a thing. Um, they just, they need sex for aftercare. So that's uh fairy was one of those, I believe. Um, yeah, there's been a few and she's, she gave me blanket permission a long time ago to talk about it. So, uh, and I'm still not naming her entire name. So, oh, we got a hell yeah to shadowy Fox from Hadia. So let's see what this comment is. It can be a yellow flag. Check in, figure out the why, see if you can address things. Or if there's a deeper issue that is a previous that is a previously undiscovered red flag, yeah, uh, landmines, they're bad. They can hit hard. Uh, I mean, I know I do a lot of intense scenes. Um, I didn't talk about it much last Sunday on the show. Uh, maybe I did. I, to be honest, it's been a week and I don't remember. And my week started with some of. The, not some of, with the absolute worst drop I've ever experienced. It, uh, the party was Saturday night. It was great. It was amazing. I had amazing scenes with people. Mayfair even got to do some fire on you. Yes, sir. And that was fun. <laughs> mm-hmm. Cause I don't, I mean, we, we tried to cup in, we did a little bit of stuff here and there, but I was, when you said, yeah, fire, I was kind of shocked, but it was really cool. I enjoyed that. Um, but yeah, I, I had, like the cups. They, they, yeah. they just feel like someone's pinching me. Yeah. Well, the <laughs> last time you tried when we were showing, doing a show and tell for somebody, you said that wasn't too bad. Yeah. But it still wasn't your favorite, was it? <laughs> no. It's definitely so, not something I think I would do for fun. Yeah. Well, I, I I went into these scenes knowing exactly what I was going into. And, you know, a couple of people, I asked them, uh, we went to lunch. Okay, what do you want? I want more sharp, pointy things. Okay, knife play during our impact scene. Gotcha. 
Probably going to be blood. You cool with that? With you, yes. It's actually a soft limit for her. So, you know, depending on who she's playing with, and how much she trusts their abilities, then yes. The other person said, humiliation and degradation. Completely off the cuff. Now, I think I'm terrible at this. <laughs> uh, apparently, I'm not. Um, and it got really, really deep, really intense, really fast. And, <clears throat> and that mixed with the other scenes and there was a, a great impact scene uh that started off the evening that brought someone to tears who is um uh, which they all ended up going to tears uh except for my brat and you <laughs> <Make fair. laughs> two different people <clears throat> but you know it, it it was just very intense evening and v and so good. And there was, I mean, there was some stress leading up to it. And I think I didn't take the time to prepare myself for what I was going to get into. Uh, but my whole point is, is not to, to brag about my play or talk about my drop or the, the week that it's been with all kinds of chaotic things going on. Um, it's that I consented to it and I knew what was happening. And if you would have put me in that situation when I was brand new, which I was put in that situation when I was brand new, um, I would have freaked out. I would have, th there's no way I would have not handled it. Uh, even though at that time in my life, I was wild and hateful and I'm not blushing. Why do you say I'm blushing? Anyway, <laughs> um, it's like she had dropped like that. Yeah, it does, but that, that's part of it. I mean, that's part of the risk-aware consensual kink. I know that if I go into something like that, that that's definitely a possibility. So, yeah. Uh, no, I don't hear the noise from Mayfair. Oh, okay. Well, I guess it was just coming through on my end then. That's weird. Um but yeah, back to my point. Sorry. It's <laughs> squirrel. <laughs> squirrel. <laughs> it's been a day. Uh, but no, you know, getting into that when you're new, and this still is a 101. And I think that everyone needs 101. Whether you've been in this for, for 10 seconds or 10,000 years. Um, yeah, you're vampires. Sorry. Yeah, vampires. <laughs> Woohoo! Uh, but no, seriously, it's it's a wonderful reminder that hey, we all have to consent. And while it is obvious, it is often forgotten. I challenge tops, dominance, masters. I absolutely challenge you to say, no, I'm not okay with that. Because unless you're a narcissist, unless you're a psychopath, there is a huge part of you that gets joy from leading, guiding, and directing your submissives or from providing that topping service to bottoms or subs or slaves or random people as a service top or whatever it is. You know, if you're a good person, if you're a decent person, um, then you don't go into it with self selfish intentions because that makes you an abuser because you're not giving them uh, what they need and you're not finding the enjoyment in it. Dominant is just another name for submissive. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, that's right. I said it. You don't like it, kiss my ass. Um, that's the kind of <laughs> that's the kind of week it's been, but it's true. We just happen to be the ones that are also the control freak. So, what's my definition of a dominant? It's a sub who's a control freak, the <laughs> ultimate brat. Um, yeah, controversial, but I mean, in the reality of things, 
Art Kent says, yeah, I need to try out Vampire Play. Uh, and PWB is laughing at what I'm saying, but it, it, it's really true. Uh, unless you are just a freaking abuser and it really is just all about you and what you want and your needs. And I don't care which side of the slash you're on. If that's the case, you're an abuser because subs abuse people too. So, uh, going back to the, to the title of the show topic, uh, consent. Doms have rights too. We all do. Uh, really, I got I got nothing else. I'm surprised people aren't commenting like crazy. Uh, yes, I agree, Charlie. Uh, okay. Uh, dominants and submissives both provide service. Yes. I mean, at the end, we're all human. Yeah. Uh, PWB says me, 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 me. Yeah. I, I mean, but that's you. That's, uh, I believe that to be true. <laughs> burn baby. Burn. <laughs> oh, going to give us the, the little signs there for a minute. <clears throat> Lilac wine says a top or Dom needs to be able to hold their own counsel when their bottom or sub is triggering and frenzied all over the place. Absolutely. Uh, Shadowy Fox, I had two different instances in the past two years I had to say no. One, because I didn't know them well enough for the mental dangers. The other asked for bondage, which I'm not equipped to do safely. Awesome. Awesome. Lilac Wine says, agree, Cauldron. A dom is the ultimate submissive. Now, I didn't say that. <laughs> Did I? Did I say the ultimate submissive? I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think I said that. <laughs> Let's not get too offensive here or too controversial. Uh, Art Kitten, I like that perspective. Some tops come off egotistical. Yeah, I'm one of those. You see me in a dungeon and holding toys in my hand, walking around, getting ready for a scene, and you'll definitely think I'm egotistical. Um, but that's the headspace that I need to be in. The rest of the time, you just, you'll think I'm a dork or a nerd or a geek or whatever word you want to use. Um, but yeah. So. That's a good point. Um, <laughs> go ahead. Lilac wine. She said, I feel safer with a Dom that calls red. That she's just always so full of goodness. I mean, I think you oh, go ahead. Huh? No, you first. Um, sorry, I'm getting distracted by the comments. I'm laughing. Um, <laughs> daddy, uh, <laughs> it, no, I'm laughing. Um, at Lumpy. Oh, I thought I was the ultimate submissive. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, you're master bottom topper there. <laughs> you've called a couple scenes. Well, not called them, but like stopped and checked in. Uh, we were like when we did our cathartic scene. Um, yeah. And in the middle of the cathartic scene, you were like, mm, I don't know. Because I asked for a toy that I would basically at that point had said, nope. And I asked you to use that toy in my cathartic scene. Um, yeah. That didn't, toy didn't, go ahead. That toy was a hard limit. Mm. And then at that point, and you're at, you're in the middle of a scene and I always tell people do not renegotiate. Um, and I made a very dangerous call then. And I, one that I don't, I never advise people to know because, uh, you know, I say, well, I know you, I, you know, we've, at that point, we were been in this for what two years, somewhere around there. And it's like I, you had told me the only reason why I went ahead with that was because you had told me what that toy felt like to you, 
And that was the point was to get that feeling. Mm. But it did. It took me, what, five minutes or so of. Us standing there discussing this. Yes. Yeah. Because I was so close to, to saying, no, I'm, I'm just going to have to stop it. Uh, we'll renegotiate in a few days or a week and then see. Uh, but once you start your scenes, you're focused on what you're doing. There's a uh, definite difference in being confident and being cocky. Yeah, there is. But I've been accused of being cocky or being an asshole my whole life. So I'm just used to that because I'm straightforward and I tell people what I think. Ultimate alpha submissive. <laughs> Easy, Lilac. <laughs> Then you hit me with whatever, with what you're walking around with. Well, yes, I do. I tend to do that because we're playful like that. Uh, Hadia says, yep, my no as a top sadly ended a dynamic. He wanted me to put his safety at a higher level of risk than I was prepared to take accountability for. And I don't regret it. I'm still 100%. I still, oh, 100 I still want to own that yeah, I still 100% on that now. So, uh, I, I expected this out of the chat room. Because of the people that we come to know and love that are here all the time. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, that snarl. <laughs> Hiliawea says, uh, uh, who is now Odie. Uh Oh, do it again. Odie, I am so glad to see you because I thought you were worried I was mad at you uh, for hitting me in the junk last week, and I'm not, dude. Uh, we're going to do lunch tonight, uh, or dinner tonight, I believe, so I'm hoping you can show up. Uh, maybe your girl's <laughs> off and she can come with you. He said he's uh, driving to the hills. Oh, uh, okay. So I don't know that he'll be able to come. Oh, uh, okay. He says, nah. Oh, good. You didn't think I was mad at you. Good. All right. Well, now that I'm I'm done, she's working, uh, doing personal housekeeping. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody have any questions? Oh, you'll be there. Awesome. You will be there. Sweet. Uh, we'll be there about 6.30, man. 6.30. Um, so, yeah. Opinions are like assholes, Charlie. You are so right. Uh, oh, you were the one that asked about the uh, the clothing oh. for uh, uh, Littles. Um, the way he described it in the message was brat subs. For brat subs, yeah. Which may not be a little, because right. it could be said that I'm a bit of a brat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, most people just regular clothing stores, Amazon, uh, around Halloween is a great time to get some costumes if you're trying to do like the bratty little schoolgirl cheerleader or something like that. Uh, <laughs> Cold <or> peepee punch. <laughs> oh, uh, middle, yeah, whatever it may be. Um, those are great places. Uh, your local uh Porn stores or adult adult stores, uh, Fredericks of Hollywood, Adam and Eve website, and they're Heck, like Walmart I said, even it, has some shirts now that are bratty as crap. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, just there's there's all kinds of of good stuff. There's some vendors that I wish I could give you names. I've met them. I I didn't purchase anything from them. Uh, so I, I don't endorse them because I haven't tested the quality of what they have. Uh, but there's a bunch of them out there. Probably some of the forums on FetLife, uh, Facebook, kick groups. You can probably find if you're wanting to spend your money with a kink vendor, then that's the route that I would go. And that's always the way that I recommend if you can. Uh, if you can get it from a kink vendor, then then that would be great. Um, oh, also, I just wanted to say thank you, Odie, 
Hilly away in the chat room uh, for this hat. You gave it to me some time ago, and I've worn it several times, but I never thanked you for it. So I just wanted to, to say thank you for that. Uh, Lilac Wine says, Cauldron, have you ever been in a situation where you wished you had ca called red but didn't? Uh, and what were the consequences for you? Um, quite a few times, but my memory is failing me as to a specific situation. Uh, I'm trying to think of something. Mayfair, do you, do you know me to do that with anybody in the past three years? Um, I think there was a point where you were service topping more than you were topping for yourself and it made you kind of be in a funk um, and you had to step away from all play at that point, but nothing where it was like a, a, an obvious red. It was just, you got out of your Dom headspace and you were more in a service headspace and even playing with me, you were feeling like it was a service and it wasn't something you were getting enjoyment out of. I think. Yeah. But. Yeah. Well, and really, I mean, that is a case of it. That was um, because that last night when I topped like nine people had some very intense scenes and I should have, I should have taken the night off with the exception of two scenes and I should have told people no. And I didn't. And the consequences of it, um, uh, the consequences was I put the show on hiatus for two months. I didn't attend any events, uh, any munches, anything for, for a month and a half, two months. And I just had to have some me time. And uh, it cost me a lot of listeners. <laughs> it cost me some Patreon producers. These are the consequences. Um, it which cost me out of out of pocket expenses because you know you Patreon producers with your donations, the show uh, at what it's at now kind of breaks even. So as far as cost, uh, so it ended up where I was having to pay for quite a bit of things for a few months. Uh, actually, uh, this month was the first month that I broke even again since I did that back in the end of February. Um, so yeah, there was, uh, and mentally I was just exhausted and drained and I almost quit the show. Like I, I was very close because originally I'd said, I'm going to take one month. I'm going to, you know, give me one month. I canceled the Patreon, uh, producers payouts or, or withdrawals because I didn't think it was fair for them to pay when I wasn't delivering content. And uh, then I ended up canceling another month, I believe. No, I didn't, because I was prepping content by the end of the first month. So, And then I eventually got to put in that, putting it out. So it was about a month and a half that I was out. Um, but there was a whole lot of conversation in my house about canceling or about ending the, uh, the podcast. Because I was just, I'd hit a wall. I was too, too drained. Four years of this, over a hundred episodes. So, I, you know, averaging uh, episodes every two weeks. And that's kind of where the life came from, I guess. Because I just, I needed to change things up. And I started, decided, okay, well, we're, I'm going to go live. And uh, then Mayfair jumped on board. So, I can't clearly, I can't remember where, but I've seen a t-shirt that clearly said, I don't need your at, your sass. I have plenty of my own. That's one of, uh, that's one that seems fitting. Yeah. Right on, Fox. Let's see. Janet Smith, since I am new to the DS scene, I'm curious about many things. I love that my master will tell me no to something I ask for because he feels I'm not ready for it yet. Uh, there was a comment there about him protecting your uh, physical and emotional health as well. 
uh, that came just after this, but I cannot seem to find it. Um, so yeah, I think that's really good that he is protecting you and it is fun sometimes to say no. <laughs> <laughs> he says my mental and physical health is most important to him. Yeah. That's good. That's that's the way it should be. Uh have you seen anything, Mayfair, that you want to touch on? Um I think you've grabbed most of them. Hmm. Yeah, you've got a lot of comments that people are happy that you didn't cancel the show and you took your break when you needed to. Well, thank you. Hey, Anthony, I've chatted with you through the comments before, but I can't remember if you've actually been in the show or not, uh, or been here for the live. Uh, welcome. Glad you could stop by for the live show. Sorry, I was a little bit late getting here. <laughs> <laughs> I, he was also encouraging I, people to like and share your your video earlier nice nice thank you so much for that all right well we are going to go into the post show so this is going to wrap up the the primary portion but before that and you know i got to thank some people so uh let me go ahead and mention my patreon producers Show producers, let's start with those executives. You know what? Let's change it up. I'm going to start with the junior producers and go up. K2SO, my very first Patreon producer, Jeremiah and Morgana13. Uh, the the standard producers, Kane Sin, Alexandria, not the daddy. KJ, who is absolutely a lovely person, finally got to speak with her. Uh, Lily Chaos who's been a huge help this past week in giving sort out the kinks a place to stay. Uh, civil disobedience, Hadia, Hadia, Sir and Kitten, Raven, Raider 69 time, uh, Bonneville, uh, Sia, Rose, PWB, got it right that time, uh, MBR Poodle, and Bad Dog. Uh, welcome to the to the Discord group there and the Patreon support. Senior producers, Matt, Emerald Wolf, Roxy Bear, Trouble 113. M had uh, volunteered to come on the show today and be a co-host. So I'm uh, sorry I didn't mean to ignore that request with the response that I gave when you'd said that. Uh, it definitely was noticed, and I'm definitely going to talk to you about a topic for you to pick to talk about, because I would love to have you on. Um, and she's also the admin in the Discord group. So if you become a Patreon producer, uh, you do get to uh, join that Discord group at the $5 and up level, and uh, Emerald Wolf is the one that does your onboarding. So, And we'll come back with some rules if, if you break them. <laughs> <laughs> no politics, people. It's kink, not politics. Roxy Bear, Trouble 113, That Place in Oklahoma City, J.K. Voss. Normally uh, it was just J.K., but I realized that there was a a, a last name there. Uh, baby Loving Sir, Sort Out the Kinks, Master Gabriel, Gabriel, <laughs> Rafi, Daddy Steve, Serpent, Purple Pantera, Stella, uh, Grog for Life, who is now just Tommy, Art Kitten, author, Mistress Black Rose, upstate South Carolina couple, and Jonathan Hood. Welcome. That's another new one, who I believe was a guest on the uh, Kinky Cast podcast. I, I remember that name for sure, and I think I remember him saying something about it, too. I believe it was somewhere around it episode 68 or something, but I can't remember what it was about. I'll have to go back and check that out. Uh, executive producer, Shadowy Fox, Junicorns, Angel, Johnny Farrell, Farrell, uh, Farrell, Haru Webb, Ray Webb, Lilac Wine, and a brand new one, Brendan. Thank you so much for jumping on board there at the $25 level. All right. There are also one, there's one spot available for a benefactor. If you want to, if you want to pay to be on the show, you can be a co-host <laughs> at two thousand dollars a month. Pro producers are one hundred dollars a month, and master producers are fifty dollars a month. The pro and the master producers, uh, I only have three spots available for each of those. 
<coughs> so if you want those, I heard one of those is going to be filling up. So of course, all the contact information is in the links below, along with a list of vendors that I know, like, use, and trust. Stick around for the post show. This has been Master Cauldron, the chat room, and Mayfair. For cauldronscript.com, <laughs> unearth the truth. <laughs> All right, I've given myself enough of a bumper there. Jesus Christ. <coughs> I started to waffle and waffle and waffle. Uh, uh, yeah. Since uh, Assuming everyone's still here, uh, Tink posted, don't forget, if you are a member of Discord, uh, about the discount they're offering currently. Oh, crap. <laughs> I forgot that. Okay. Yeah, uh, there is a link in the in the description down below to uh, Tink's Toys. There's a Facebook group. There's a FetLife profile down there. Um, you know, I've already said it once. If I if I can't try a product out, I'm not going to endorse it. I have a quirk that they made that is absolutely phenomenal, and I've seen a lot of their other toys and. I'm pretty sure I've played around with them. I don't know if I've actually played with them, with some of the other ones, but um, maybe I did. Maybe I did when I was uh, co-topping Tink with uh, Just Tommy. So they are really good. But yeah, if you're in the Discord group, they're getting uh, you're getting a 13% discount on their stuff. So definitely, definitely, definitely check it out. Such a fantastic show and topic. Juicy, juicy. If I pledge, can I beat you? For $2,000 a month? Yeah, after a year. <laughs> $24,000 and you can beat me. <laughs> I think uh, Master Gabriel's in here today. What? Oh, there he is. Hey, hey, shelter in. Welcome. I'll just send you a link and have you bounce in for the post show. <laughs> but you're not prepared for that. Got to be prepared for everything. Uh, I went to Catholic schools with a Jonathan Hood, and I just giggle snorted coffee into my sinuses. <laughs> oh, yep. Janice. Says this podcast had helped me discover who I am and taught me about BDSM. I appreciate you. Uh, appreciate all you do. You help more people than you realize. Um. Yeah, that somebody said I was blushing earlier. That would be the closest that I get to blushing would be to a comment like that. So thank you so much. I'm I'm glad that we can help, and, and it is we. There is a lot of people involved in this show my wife uh, mayfair friends like all the friends that i've made the the friends that i've met through the show truly are the best people i mean I, there's only a few people uh on here that i knew in in real life <laughs> uh pwb i knew before the show well actually i met her because of the show because i was going to interview her uh, in the early, early days, um, which eventually led me to meet Tink, uh, Twisted Tink, and yeah, really the show led me to meet everybody, which I guess we can thank Fifty Shades for that. Kind of me even, because your name is what kept popping up and intriguing me <laughs> yeah. yeah and by that by that for those of you who don't know it was uh not 50 shades that brought me into the lifestyle it was 50 shades that brought full attention to a lot of hidden abusers coming out into the public eye or into the kink eye and um the kink eye that sounds like a undercover name for like anal or something oh mm. we're gonna hit it in the kink eye Anyway, um, <laughs> but no, it was all that abuse and I was kind of just doing private play at that time. And yeah, you know, then it, it hit me. 
about jumping back in and things coming to light between my wife and I as far as me being honest about just how kinky I was. And I mean, you've heard the stories, all of you that are here today. So you know that I did it the wrong way to begin with. And, you know, before you started, uh, I don't know what that's about. Just give him a good, oh, daddy. And he blushes. I don't blush. I, I might get turned on. I don't blush. <laughs> the blood might rush somewhere, just maybe not to your cheeks. Yeah. <laughs> Did you uh, see? Yeah, there you go. Alexandra. Uh, no, I didn't read it. I just saw the name. So I'm like, I'll throw it up there. Uh, Alexandria says, I was itching a sensitive spot when you did that. Probably the first time I had a reaction to the growls in that way. <laughs> oh, God, that's funny. So, yeah, before uh, PWB says, before you started, yeah, before I had actually started the show, when I was wanting to get a bunch of interviews done pre-hand and then a uh, uh, new fetish name tank. Uh, kink eye. <laughs> mm. So, all right. Uh, Mayfair, what do you have coming up this week? Anything? Work. <laughs> uh, we're looking, we're already scheduled for next Saturday and Sunday. We're hoping to work ourselves out of the Sunday work, but it's very unlikely we'll work out of both days of the weekend. So, okay. Well, Hopefully both of them won't won't be filled with work. So if you're if you're working next Sunday, then uh, maybe Emerald Wolf will have a topic that she wants to talk about, and we can address that. Uh, Janice Smith, I want to give you cookies. Never seen Fifty Shades, but always knew I'm a submissive. Yeah, if you want to waste a few hours of your time, <laughs> PWB. Kink eye punch. That's a that's a great. <laughs> name. You guys keep talking about this kink eye, and all I can think of is kink eye for the vanilla guy. Kink eye for the vanilla guy. Oh my god, that's <laughs> great. That's great. Oh, uh, Lily Cow says I've said it once. I'll say it again. MK and Lady Catherine are the foster parents around here for the kinksters, and he's good for the economy. <laughs> Well, I do try to get everybody to travel here. I try to get everybody to move here. Um, and and it's working. So, yeah. And it's just, you know, taking care of people. Make sure that when people come for a visit, that they're well taken care of. That's that's important to me. Uh, if I want them to come back, I got to treat them just bad enough in all the right, right, all the right ways, right? <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Oh, Lilac. Yep. Yep. I've got to get going. Have a great week ahead, all. Much love and squishies. Well, squishies back to you. And we will connect this week. Uh, you have my word. We will we will chat this week. Um Sort is on her way in a rental car to uh back home. So she'll get there about two, three in the morning, and uh, everything will be right with the world again. So, Hadia says, this show kept me focused and encouraged on my kinky dissertation. <laughs> hey, how's the uh, how's the flogger uh, coming along there, Hadia? Hadia. I always say it wrong the first time. All right. Well, this post show has been. Oh, if you want to hear something really, really bad, if you if you like dad jokes and you want to hear me tell really bad dad jokes, I put out like eight episodes of a comedy podcast that was going to accompany this one. And it is rated uh, mature. Or explicit. Um but it is what, what god it's been so long i don't even freaking remember the uh the name of it that is so so sad <laughs> uh 
Uh, Cauldron's Crypt, Time to Laugh. And they are some really bad dad jokes. There's only like eight episodes, and they last like a minute to two minutes long. And uh, you can hear me do some really bad impersonations. And, uh, yeah, I don't even know why I'm promoting this crap right now because it's horrible. <laughs> Uh, but I might end up releasing some new ones to it. Um, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I think I'm slap happy and tired, y'all. <laughs> so, all right. Well, uh, does anybody have anything pressing that they want to comment? Art Kitten says, yes, I love dad jokes. Well, cool. Uh, it's actually on the website, coldernscrypt.com. Time to laugh here. Let me throw a link down in the uh, the chat for you, if it will allow that. Control copy and control paste. There we go. Uh oh, crap! I was trying to click on somebody's comment. I just deleted it. Uh, I was not happy with the symmetry, and I didn't think the knots were right enough. So scrap and restart. Chick, if it's got crosses and beads on it, it's good enough for me. <laughs> it's a it's a rosary flogger to go along with um uh da, 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 the the whole uh religious thing, the um Catholic priest kinda. Here's my collar. And the Lord says ye you know? shall. Neil. <laughs> yeah. The way your shirt looks, it kind of looked like it fitted fit there like that. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? It kind of does. Right. <laughs> Hello, my children. <laughs> <laughs> Beep the collar. <laughs> Lily says, if you want dad jokes, join Discord Discord. Well, they, yeah, that's a whole different kind of dad joke right there, because they all call me dad in Discord. Because I'm not, don't get me wrong, I don't want you to join if you're expecting like daily conversations with me, because that's just not going to happen. Um, I pop in and out of there randomly a few times a week, check some comments, check messages. Uh, you can send me a message on there and I will check it typically within an hour of you sending it, uh, except for this past week. I haven't been able to do that because everything else was gone to hell but um and i don't know if master gabriel is still here but i want to thank you uh hadia art kitten shadowy fox uh even uh pwb didn't realize it but she was a help this week because i started thinking about one of the conversations that we had after a cathartic scene uh the big one that we had and uh kind of relied on some of those words um, which I don't remember the specific words, just the intent and overcoming things like we had talked about in processing. And, um, yeah, Lilac Wine, uh, Tink, just everybody that's in Discord. Lily Chaos was an absolute massive, massive help letting Sort stay here while her car was broke down. And, um, uh, made us dinner one night, cooked some delicious burgers and fries. Oh, my God. Uh, Mayfair, you really missed out on that. Sorry, therapy cold. It, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was good. Uh, Janice, um, much love to you. Again, thank you so much for the update and for coming in. You're becoming a regular, and I'm truly grateful uh, for that, so... <laughs> Charlie says, Father, I have sinned. <laughs> How long since your last confession, my child? <laughs> oh, Lord. All right. Well, we're down to the super goofy. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap up the post show. If you're listening to this, because I, I cut the post show and it goes out in a special feed to the patrons. Uh, if you're listening to this, then it's probably about two or three months from the day that it's recorded. 
because I'm pretty behind on episodes. There will be two episodes out this week. Uh, I've I've got one ready. I just didn't get it published with everything. So I'll publish it. It was supposed to come out this past week. I'll publish it, and then I'll pun- publish another episode. So you guys will get me uh, in your ears twice. Uh, far too long, Father, he says. <laughs> so Shadowy Fox says, there's a distinct difference between forgive me, Father, I have sinned, and I've been bad, Daddy. <laughs> Fox, I love you, man. I do. You are. Oh, yeah. But ain't that the truth? <laughs> Atsila. She says, truth, Fox. All right. Well, yeah, we, PWB says we helped each other. Yeah, but I'm talking about this week in remembering some things that I needed to remember. Um, like I said, you were a huge help to me this week and you didn't even realize it. So it was, uh, it was great. Everybody here. Thank you so very much. And before I go getting all emotional and whatnot, see, I got to use humor to diffuse my emotions. Uh, that's going to do it. Mayfair, any, any final thoughts, any last things that you want to say about the article, anything that we've talked about here today? No. No. Well. <laughs> fine. <Mm-mm>. Fine. <laughs> All right. Well, in that case, I will see some of you later soon, whenever, and I will definitely talk to everybody next. Meep. <laughs> I don't know where that comes from, but I love it. Meep. Uh, but I will, uh, I'll talk to you all very soon on discord and, uh, we'll have the, um, the, the, uh, munch today as usual. That'll start at 5 PM Eastern time. So in 40 minutes, 19, a little, 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 39 minutes. So <laughs> Mayfair as usual, say goodbye. Bye guys. Bye everybody. Loves you bunches. Have a week.